thank you for your loving kindness. We praise you for your tender mercies. We thank you to God for your outstretched hand. Thank you for how you love us and how you defend us. Thank you for another opportunity to break the bread of life. We pray to God that you would speak in the midst of your people, great God that you are. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless the name of Jesus one more time. Grab your Bibles right where you are. Stand to your feet all over the room. Go with me to the gospel according to Matthew. Matthew's gospel, the fourth chapter, verses 18, 19, and 20. Matthew chapter 4, we're going to begin reading with verse number 18. When you have it, you can say praise the Lord. The Bible reads on this one, it's from the King James Version. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, somebody say two brothers. Two brothers. Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me. Somebody say, Follow me. Follow me. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. You may take your seats in the presence of the Lord. Today I want to preach from a subject entitled Committed Christians. Come on now, come on now. Committed Christians. Matthew chapter 4 has a couple different stories that allude to the idea of commitment. In the first beginning verses we find Jesus fighting against Satan. Here, Jesus is fighting against Satan uh, in a battle by using the word of God. It lets us know that Jesus was committed to warring not with flesh and blood, but by using the word of God. You remember when Jesus was led into the wilderness? The Bible said he was led there by the spirit to be tempted of the devil for 40 days and for 40 nights. Coming out of the wilderness, Jesus being in a very vulnerable state, here comes the devil. And I got to tell you today that you got to watch yourself after being a man in an experience with God, after being in the presence of God, after having supped with God, fellowship with God, commune with God, you will soon understand that the devil is somewhere close by. Come on, somebody say amen. After having dealt with God and supped with God and being in the presence of God, here comes the devil. And he says to Jesus, if you be who you say you are, if you be the son of the most high God, why don't you turn this stone into bread? Y'all know what Jesus said. Jesus said, it is written that thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Jesus didn't tell, uh, the Satan didn't tell Jesus. He said, well, what I need you to do, why don't you just bow down to me? He says to him, it is written that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only. Jesus was committed to battle by using the word of God. 
Then we find right here also in Matthew chapter 4, amen, that John has now been put in prison. John the Baptist is now locked up. But here comes Jesus extending to us a commitment to the mission of God, amen, and he picks up where John left off. Amen. He picks up where John left off and he preaches the same message that John was preaching. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus was committed to the preaching of the gospel. He was committed to preaching repentance unto the world because he understood, amen, that the mission of God was that he be committed to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen there. Amen. And so now when we look at our text, we find, amen, that Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee. And as he walks by the Sea of Galilee, he notices two men. Hallelujah. He notices two brethren. And to the natural eye, these are just ordinary men. Y'all gonna walk with me today? Yeah. To the natural eye, these are everyday average shows. But Jesus, somebody say Jesus. Yeah. Jesus sees something in these men that the natural eye does not see. On, to the natural eye, these are ordinary men doing an ordinary thing. But aren't you so glad that the God we serve, when everybody else sees ordinary, your God sees extra ordinary. When, when everybody else sees natural, your God sees supernatural. When everybody else just sees John, God sees the calling and the mandate that is on my life. And today, today, you have to understand, you have to stop trying to explain, I know I've been saying it a lot, but quit trying to explain yourself because people will never see in you what God sees until they begin to see with the eyes of God. Look at somebody and say, I might not be anything to you. But I'm something to God. I may not be much to you, but I'm something to God. I may not be all that you think I ought to be, but when God looks at me, when God sees me, he does not see me where I am, but God sees me where I'm going to be. So don't despise the day of small beginnings because I may not look like something, but after a while, by and by, it is going to be revealed who God has called. Tell somebody, I am somebody in God. I am somebody in God. I am somebody in God. It may not look like it, but I'm somebody. I may not dress like it, but I am somebody. I may not have the do that everybody else has, but I am somebody. May not have the position that everybody else has. May not drive what everybody else is driving. May not even live where everybody else lives. I may not be on the highest pinnacle down here in the earth, but in the kingdom of my God, I am somebody in the kingdom of my God. I am the righteousness of God. I am his workmanship. I am the called according to God. I am the anointed of almighty God. I am the sent one of almighty God. I am somebody. Tell somebody I am somebody. I am somebody. I am somebody. And right here, I got to take a break, glory to God, because my heart is overwhelmed with joy today. You don't understand it, but my heart is overwhelmed with joy because this time last year, I didn't know, amen, all of this was going to be all of this. I did not know, amen, that we would have a ministry, amen, this time last year. But I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful at what God has done. I'm so grateful at how God has shifted things. I'm 
so grateful at how God has moved me. So many of y'all just trusted me in the process. So many of y'all just said, Pastor, if you go, we're going. And I come to tell you today that this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our eyes. People said it wouldn't work. Folks said we didn't know how to run a church. We didn't know how to start a church. Didn't know how to establish anything. Said we were going to fail within six months. But look at what God has done. In just one month from today, we will be celebrating a year at what God has done. Y'all don't got to shout, but excuse me for about 30 seconds. Why I give God the praise because he made something out of nothing. Glory to God. He made something out of nothing. He made something out of nothing. Yes, he did. And so, Jesus, he notices these two men. Amen. And these two men just look like ordinary men. But God, catch this. God will call and use people that other folk look don't. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Can I preach on you? God will use people that other folk look beyond. God will use people. Catch this. If this don't bless nobody else, I hope it blesses the marriage. That God will use people that other folks said were strange. That other oh y'all not talking in here. That other folks said we're not gonna allow that gift to operate in this space because that's not how we do it. But aren't you so glad that the God we serve when other folk look over you and rejected you and put you down and said you would never amount to anything and said you would never be delivered and healed and rise up to the height of your potential. God looked at everybody, shook his head and shook his finger and said you a liar because whatever I put my hands on, it will become what I said it will become. Touch your neighbor and say God's hand is on me. His own man. And so catch this. Jesus looks at these two men and he notices something about these two men. He notices, catch this, that the men are crafting, they are practicing, or they are working in their profession. Y'all yes, yes, these men are not sitting idle. Can I walk in here? Come on, now. These men are not sitting by doing nothing. They are working, catch this, and in the midst of them working, their destiny is revealed. Can I tell somebody today that maybe the reason you don't know what your next level is is because you are not doing anything on the level you are on. Sometimes God will reveal to you who you really are while you are busy doing what you're doing. I didn't know that I was going to establish a church, but while I was working as a youth pastor in the field that I was in, God was revealing to me who he really was calling. I wish I had a witness in here that understood that my destiny is caught up in my work. If I don't do anything, then God never has the time to reveal to me what his plan is for my life. Some of y'all did not know, glory to God, that you were going to be a part of this ministry until you grace this church because you sometimes have to be working for God to reveal what he is going to do in the Bible says that our job is to occupy until he comes. God never told any of us to sit down and do nothing. Can I preach in here? God never told anybody to just do the bare minimum and you're going to be alright. But sometimes you got to be engrossed in something. Sometimes, catch this, catch this brother Jerry, sometimes you have to be so engrossed in something that God reveals to you, you might be good at this thing and you might be good in this 
this place, but it is only a breeding ground for the next. I wish I had a church to have a next place that God is getting ready to take you to. Look at somebody and say, Don't you get too comfortable because God is getting ready to snatch you up from where you are and He's getting ready to reveal to you who He's called you to be. God, I feel him in here. Tell somebody I'm at my breeding ground. I'm at my breeding ground. So the reason I was hurt on that level is because he was getting ready to take me somewhere that I would be able to minister to the hurt. The reason I was snatched in that place is because he was getting ready to reveal to me that in the next place you were going to have to help people that were snatched, help people that were broken, help people that were hurting, help people that were ill, help people that could not see their way. God said I had to take some stuff from you, strip you and crush you so that when you got to your next level, you would be able to help somebody in the space you're in. God help me in here. So catch this. Christ notices that these men were working. These men that Jesus notices, glory to God, they were fishers. Somebody say fishers. This notices that, that the men were fishers and he takes who they are, come on now, and what they know, yeah, and he uses who they are and what they know to build upon that for their next place. Amen. Can I tell you something? Catch this in your spirit God is not requiring you to be somebody else. I wish I had a witness to help me in here. God is not requiring you to change who you are so that he can use you for the kingdom. God is going to use your nasty testimony. Oh God, I wish I had a witness in here. God is going to use all your mess ups, hang ups, disappointments for his glory in the kingdom. God does is saying, I don't need somebody that never did any wrong. God said, I need some folk that were tore up from the floor because when I began to minister to the gangbanger, I need to be able to have somebody that can witness to them on the level that I wish I had a prayer to. Took somebody say, I'm not trying to fake the fuck. I'm not trying to change who I am. I'm not trying to change my testimony because God is going to get the glory out of my life. Tell somebody, don't change who you are. Don't you change who you are. Don't you change your testimony. So what if you were messed up? God is trying to reach the messers. So what if you were tore up? God is trying to reach the tore up. So what if you were broken? God is trying to reach the broken. So what if you were at the back of the line? God is trying to reach the back of the line. Tell your neighbor, God's going to get the glory. Gonna get the glory. Yes, he is. Catch yes, he is. He's Christ. Christ recognizes that these men were fishers. Uh -huh. But can I tell you what he says? He said, You're fishing, but you're fishing for the wrong thing. God said, Some of y'all in him, he says, Some of y'all are doing what you're called to do. You're just doing it in the wrong place. You're just it in the wrong field. You're just doing it with the wrong people. God says, some of y'all got a gift to dance, but you got to stop twerking long enough to come to the house of God to cheat. I wish I had a prayer trip. To cheat for how to praise dance in the name of Almighty God. God says, some of y'all, I wish I had a witness in here, some of y'all, glory to God, are drinking ye all of the cup, but you got to take Hennessy out of your cup and drink the New Testament in my blood for Jesus. I wish I had a prayer church and tell somebody God's going to get the glory. Yes, Catch this. Christ recognizes that these men were operating on one level. I, I, what I'm really trying to get you to see is that God is getting ready to take somebody with it from where they are from, to where you're supposed to be. God's getting ready to snatch you out of where you are and he's getting ready to place you where you're supposed to be. God's get, God said, listen, you've been down for too long. You've been bruised for too long. You've been in the back for too long. Can I be your prophet today and tell you that the God we serve is getting ready to pick you up out of the pit you're in and place you on a higher ground. God! Oh, 
million people that understood I may be down right now, but catch me this time next week. Catch me this time next month. Catch me this time next Eyes have not seen and ears. Catch this. Christ recognized that these men are operating on one level, but there was a greater call on their life. God, I wish I had a church here. There was a heavier mantle that needed to be on their life. There was a deeper investment that had to be made. However, catch this, nothing mystical was going to happen in order for them to get to the next place. Because the problem with the church is we want a few shikaboos, shikaboos, and we want a few rolling on the floor, and we want a few dances in order to get to your next level. But catch this, Jesus didn't tell any of them to run. Jesus didn't tell any of them to shout. Jesus didn't tell any of them to dance. But Jesus said, if you want to go to the next level, the first thing you got to do is follow me. You got to understand that your next level is attached to your commitment. Your next devotion is attached to your commitment. Your next dimension is attached to your commitment. If you cannot be committed on the level that you're don't ask God to take you to a new... Oh God, they're not getting it. Don't ask God for a new car and you won't even change the oil in the car you got now. Don't ask God for more money and you won't even pay your time off the money you have now. Don't ask God for a new house and you meet roaches when you walk in your front door. You need to be committed on the level. Somebody say commitment. to them. He says if you want to be a fisher of men if you want to leave where you are Come on now. which is Speak. a place of comfortability. Come on now. If you want to leave Woo. where you are that is a place of familiarity. Come on now. God says the first thing you got to do is step out from where you are. were in a boat and according to the scriptures they were casting their net they were engrossed on in a, they were engrossed in work on that level but Christ says to them what I need you to do is to follow me catch this he did not tell them where he was going did not tell them that the road ahead was going to be easy. But I believe that somewhere down in their soul, they believe that if God is going to take me to it, God will take me through it. Somewhere in their heart, they believe that if God tells me to follow him, that means everything from now until the end is going to be taken care of. Pastor, how do you know? Because the Bible says that these men who are following him, the Bible said that he told them, I don't want you to take a purse. Don't take a script. Don't take me. Don't take clothes. He said, I don't want you to take anything. He said, I want you to go in the city. And whoever receives you, sit down and eat with them. But anybody that does not want you in their company, shake off the dust. Oh, I wish I had a prayer, church. You got to understand something. That if God is calling you, wherever there's a prophecy, there is a provision. Wherever there is a word from God, there is a supply. Wherever God is telling you to go, God has the way already made. And God said, if I can give food for the birds to eat, how much more can I take care of y'all that are living for me? He says to them, God help me. He says to them, step out from where you are. Leave your boat. Catch this. 
he tells them to step out of the boat into the water onto dry ground uh -huh. to follow him. Come on now. Come on. Catch this. He tells them, you're out there in the sea. Uh -huh. I want you to step out from where you are down into something that can drown you. But let me prove to you how bad I am. God, I wish I had a witness in here. God says, I'm calling you from where you are. And it may look like the sea is too big. It may look like that if you get engrossed, you're going to go under. But God said, I'm a water walking God. And if you just trust me, look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I'm not drown because God's going to carry me through. Hallelujah. 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 Step out in the boat. God, I wish I had a witness. God, I wish I had a witness in here. He said, step out of the boat. He said, but Peter, later on, you won't get distracted when I tell you to do it again. So this is just the rehearsal. If you want to get to dry ground, follow me. Grandma used to say it like this. I have decided to follow Jesus. The cross is before me. And the world is behind me. So no one go with me. Still, I wish I had a church here. And so let me take the picture. He says to them, Josh. Follow me. Leave where you are. Yes. And allow me to take you where you're going to go. Come on, now. Can I tell you here? Come on. Listen to the response of their action. I'm all over my notes, so I might as well preach it like I feel it at this point. Come on, now. He says to them, follow me. Step out of your boat. But listen to what they did. According to the scripture, the Bible said the first thing they did was they left their nets. Yeah. 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 Catch this. You got to understand, God was calling them into a new place. And although God was going to use what they knew for their next level, he was not going to use the tool of the previous level with where he was getting ready to take them. Because now they would not be fishing for spots and trout. They would now be fishing for men. And he understood that you can't catch a man with a net. So what I need you to do is leave all your traditions behind. Leave all of your customs behind. Leave all the things that got you where you are, where they are. And I need you to follow me. But God, I'm not used to using a new tool. God said that's good because if you use what you have, in the words of David, it will not be proven for you. But if you can go get a slingshot and five smooth stars, I wish I had a preacher in here that understood that I might have a tool on this level. Let me bring it to you. Let me bring it here to you. Let me bring it to you. He says to them, he says, follow me, and they drop Come on, man. Everything. everything. Because they realize that no man can put new wine into an old wine skin because when the new wine begins to expand, the old bottle has already been through expansion. What are you saying, Pastor? What I'm really trying to tell you is that there is some fresh stuff that's getting ready to happen in rivers of life. And I don't need your old jars to contain what God is getting ready to send this way. I need some people with some freshness. I need some people that have not been tainted by this traditionalism that's in Fairville. I need some people that have not been corrupted by the things that are surrounding us and say, God, whatever you're getting ready to do, I want you to do it. I'm not going to be a hindrance. I'm not going to be a setback. I'm not going to be the one that blocks other people from getting their miracle. I'm going to drop my, I count not myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, I'm forgetting those 
those things which are behind me and I'm pressing. He tells them, follow me. They drop their nets. And this is the part that I really love. The Bible says, and they. Somebody say, and they. And they. And they together go straight with me. It blessed me when I read it. Because too often does God speak to us all, but only one or two of us move. Amen. The Bible says, glory to God, that together. They went straight away and followed Jesus. You got to understand something. In this next season, God is going to bless partnerships. Come on now. Amen. Somebody missed it. God is going to bless friendships that are connected together. This is why you got to be so very careful with who you call your friend. Because if you would read further on, the Bible said they went back into the water. And the Bible said that they were casting their nets again. And they did not get anything. But what did Jesus tell them? Launch out into the deep. And when they did it, the Bible said that they got so many fish that they had to call for some help. God said, I'm getting ready to bless you so good that you're going to need somebody to help you maintain and occupy what I'm getting ready to send your way. Don't you understand that there is strength in unity? Oh, Josh, they'll get like one can chase a thousand. But two can put 10,000 in the flight. Wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, I'm going to send you out into the world, but I'm not sending you by yourself. I'm sending you to. What did, what did David say in Psalm 34 when he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The homer shall be, uh, the homer shall hear thereof and be glad. What did he say? Oh, magnify the Lord with me. God says, I need some people that are not so consumed with themselves that they don't mind helping their partner. If your partner go up in a praise, you ought to go up in a praise. If your partner go up in a dance, you ought to go up in a dance. If you sitting beside somebody that don't want to get nothing from God, you have my permission to move on the other side of the room because I came to experience I'm leaving here. Yeah. This is the thing I got to get you to do. The Bible said they straightway went to follow Jesus. But what they did not know was that their simple following then uh -huh. was setting them up for something down the road. Yeah. In that instance, they thought they were following Jesus because they were being obedient to what he said. But what they did not understand is that the day was going to come, God, oh man, come on now. that they, glory to God, would no longer be able to follow Jesus, but they had to go for what they know. The day was going to come. I'm, 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 the day was going to come when Jesus was going to leave this world. But Jesus said, I got to leave y'all. But I can't leave y'all by yourself. I'm going to go away. But it's good that I leave you. Because if I do not leave you, the comforter cannot come. If I do not leave you, the Holy Ghost cannot show up. He said, but if I go away, I'm going to leave something with you. And the thing I'm going to leave with you is going to be my spirit. But catch this now. The spirit that I'm going to leave with you, he's not going to hold your hand. He's not going to walk with you. He's not 
going to be by your side. He's not going to walk on the streets of Galilee. He's not going to walk on the streets of Jerusalem. But if you believe on me, as the scriptures have said, then out of your belly shall flow a river of living water. Because what I'm sending your way is not going to hold your hand, but he's going to place your heart and he's going to live inside of you. I wish I had a prayer church in here that understood that Jesus might be gold, but the reason I can still follow him is because he's living down in the city of my soul. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been saved, I've been sanctified, but the most important thing is I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. Touch your neighbor and say, I've been filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, great God Jehovah, that he tells them, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to leave you with the Holy Ghost. I'm going to leave you with a comforter. He said, but the only way that you're going to be able to still follow me is you got to follow my spirit. And so the Bible said that they were following him, but a day came that they had never seen before. And this day was called the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place with one accord. They were all praying and talking to God. And the Bible said, and the Bible said that suddenly a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind it filled it filled the room where they were sitting but can I tell you something the Bible said that when this sound and when this wind filled the room the Bible said that the Holy Ghost it sat the Bible said that it sat down on everybody that was in the room. I gotta take a commercial break right there and tell somebody that when you follow God like you're supposed to, every now and again, He'll allow His Spirit to. I wish I had a witness to sit down on you when you're depressed. His spirit will sit down when you're broke. His spirit will sit down when you're heavy. His spirit will sit down. I want to know is there anybody in the house that's heard of the Holy Ghost? I don't know what's keeping you alive. I don't know what's keeping you in a right mind. from cussing, what keeps me from flipping out, it's called the Holy Ghost, tell your neighbor, I'm so glad I got the Holy Ghost, I would have let them know what was on my mind, but the Holy Ghost, it shut my mouth, I would have let them know how I really felt, but the Holy Ghost, it closed my mouth, I would have went back to the world but the Holy Ghost it shook me it kept me together oh don't you act like you ain't never had a day when you wanted to go off on folk call folk everything but a child of God but something down on the inside said girl you better hush your mouth boy you better keep your mouth closed it's called the Holy Ghost somebody, I got the Holy Ghost. But catch this, it was Peter that was following Jesus. It was Peter that got the command to follow Jesus. So on the day of Pentecost, when everybody began to speak, 
with other tongues and began to speak in other languages. It was Peter that when the people said these men got to be crazy, they got to be drunk, they had to be drinking wine. It was the same man that was in the boat that Jesus called out of the boat. It was him that stood up and said, ye men of Galilee, these men are not drunken, supposing that it's just the third hour of the day. I wish I had a church that would help me preach. They're not drunk and they're not crazy. They're not losing their mind. They're not losing their grip. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel that in the last days, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. I wish I had a church that would help me preach. We're living in the last days, and it's time for God.
sing that with us. This is holy ground. This is holy ground. Come on, can you wave your hands all over the room? This is holy ground. This is holy ground. This is the place where God dwells. This is the place where God lives. This is with you, I'll go by and get your hand and I'll walk with you on this journey because you're not in this thing by yourself. This is holy ground. Maybe there's somebody that says I'm already saved but I fell short, Pastor. And I want to rededicate my life. I want to get back in right standing with God. I want God to continue to walk with me and begin to minister to me and, and to be in my life. If that's you, would you come? Would you come today? Rededicate your life to the Lord. It's so not, maybe you're one that says, Pastor, I want you to be my pastor. I want this to be my church. I like what you guys are doing. I like it the way you're going. And I want to be a member. I want to be a member of the Rivers of Life Church. The Rivers of Life family. We don't call ourselves a church. We call ourselves a family. Because we're connected together. We're, we love each other. So if that's you, would you come? Be a member. Become a member of the Rivers of Life family. Make this church your home today. not the last call I want to make. I don't usually make this call, but I feel that today. If there is something that God has placed in your spirit, if there's a call that God has in your heart, and you say he's calling you to do something, I want you to come. I want to lay my hands on you today. I want to lay my hands on you today. If you say, I heard the voice of God, and he's calling me into something, I want to pray. I want to stir up your gift today. Right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If there's you, if that's you, I want you to come. I want you to come. I don't care where you are. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care what you're going through. If you say God has a call on your life, I want to lay my hands on you today. I want to pray the prayer of faith with you today. That no matter, hallelujah, no matter where you are, God will begin to shake up and begin to stir up everything in your life in the name of Jesus. Right now as you're around this altar, I want you to begin to just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his calling. Thank the Lord for his calling. Thank you. Even if you had to wake you up in the midnight hour, thank him for his calling. Come on, for a few moments, call, close your eyes and just talk to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Come on, right there. Come on, thank him. I need those of you out in the audience who God has already called and you're already walking in your calling. I need you to begin to pray for these right here around the altar. I need you to begin to talk to God that as I lay my hands on them, God will begin to break everything that's not right in their life. He will begin to break every hold that's not right in their life. And he will begin to position them. He will begin to push them and move them in a new direction. Hallelujah! In the name of Jesus. Come on, saints, pray, pray. This is holy ground. Praise team, if there are people, amen, that are tuning in, 
on the praise team and you got to fall out to get yours, whatever you got to do. We don't have to be traditional today. If all we got is Josh and then if Josh falls out and all we got is just the spirit of God, I'm okay with it today. Flow in the name of Jesus.
going to release the prophetic mantle on your life. You said in your word, God, that in the last days, your sons and your daughters would prophesy in the name of the Lord.
as you prepare your hearts to give. We're going to do this a little different today. We usually sing a beat song today. Let's sing this song. Oh. 